So this is um, a crafting scrapbook, right? Like a book with scrap paper in it or paper for scrapbooking. And it's all different wood, wood backgrounds. So I'm gonna be using this today in the craft and you can see like it's got different colors. I've got a bunch of different colors in there. So this is my first book that I made for Amazon and they print it and they send it to you and it looks just like this, right? Now this has kind of got a magazine-y feel. It's slightly shiny. It feels like magazine pages a little, like mostly, I'm gonna say, right? So you can see it's a tiny bit like a satiny finish, right? It's awesome, I really love these, all right? And it comes, as is per my usual way, with a bonus, okay, a video project library included. So the project I do today, Next week, I'll put it in the video library too. It's an ongoing library that will just keep growing. And you get that by scanning the QR code in the back, signing up for the email list that goes with this, right? And then you get the, the project library. I think I'm gonna use this one. All right, so, so I have a bunch of different choices in there. I think there's nine or 10, I can't remember, um, different types of wood backgrounds, okay? So I'm undecided which one I'm going to use. And even on the page where it says, thank you for buying the book, the backside is the color that you can use, right? So we try and make it as useful as possible for you. And now I want, hang on, I have a piece of wood, okay? And spring is coming, so I'm kind of thinking birdhouse -y kind of things, right? And I'm in the mood for it. So I have a piece of wood and I'm going to dry brush that and make it look a little older. So this was all pre-stained, I don't know, a couple of years ago. I'm going to dry brush it with some white paint to make it look older, all right? So I just have some white craft paint, does not need to be chalk paint for this, and a scruffy brush, all right? And here's a tip. I have this old, I have many actually, uh, old tea towel, right? That, you know, when they're no good for the kitchen anymore, they look kind of grungy and, and sad looking. I don't throw them away. I keep them for my painting, all right? And what I do is I just throw this down, often underneath my project when I'm painting, right? and then I paint away and it makes the mess on there. And then I can like throw that literally in the, into the hamper and let it like first let it dry, then throw it in the hamper, wash it and bring it back in the craft room again, right? So it's a great way to protect your uh, surface or whatever. I'm gonna dry brush today, so I'm gonna use this to help me uh, get some paint out of my brush. Now, when you wash it and dry it, that paint never comes out anymore, but who cares? You know it's clean, you know it's ready for the next use, right? So it's a super easy way to just keep things tidy. So I, like I said, I can throw it underneath a project or I can use it for dry brushing or whatever. So I'm gonna take some white paint and I'm gonna dry brush on the wood. Now I like to go with the grain. So you can see the grain is running back and forth like this, or I can do it this way. I don't want to go across the grain. See the grain is going this way. I don't want to paint up and down. Okay. I want to paint with the grain. That's important. I find it makes it so much easier. So here's, here was the original wood. Here it is stained. And now I'm going to make it look even older. All right. So I'm just going to take my paint. It's hard to see. It's white paint. Dab my scruffiest brush in there. All right and then smash it, like smash it. <laughs> Work out some aggression, smash it on there, on the paint, on the paper towel, or you can rub it on your, um, your old towel, okay? Let that dry before you throw it in the laundry, but let it dry and then throw it in the laundry. That paint's not coming out, but it, it will be clean. All right, so I smash it on there. I get all the paints up into the brush. There's no drippy, drippy things on the end, and then very lightly, super lightly, this is important, and starting in the middle, okay? I'm gonna just drag that brush. Now let me show you what's happening. Can you see what's happening there? All right, if you do it super lightly, um, you get this effect, this aged effect. Now, the reason I had you start in the middle is because we do tend to be a little more heavy handed the first time we do this, okay? Um, so if you start in the middle, generally your project's gonna be in the middle, you do kind of want more paint there. Um, but if you overdo it, it's in the middle, it's not on the edge, right? So I always do that, so I just, I'm like, okay, that's pretty good. You can use this brush for quite a while, okay? It's hardly any paint in there. And you can just go more pressure, right? And just kinda, like literally, guys, I haven't even added more paint, all right? And I'm just, 
I'm going to go more along the edges. Still the same paint. I haven't changed, I haven't added any. Let's see the difference now. See, it's not starting to look old and weathered. So I'm going to go in here and grab a bit more. Smash it. Get some therapy. <laughs> and then I'm going to do the sides and I'm just going to tap. And look how good the sides are. So there's the side, right? It's just like that, all right? I mean, and it dries really fast because there's hardly any paint on there. All right. Can you tell I used to teach this as a class? I taught thousands of people how to do this, literally. I had a painted party business here in my city. And uh, I would go in and I would give them stained boards and stencils and these brushes and we would go and have a party and create great signs. It was so much fun. Um, so if you want more, you just keep adding to it till you're happy with the finished look, okay? Have a look at it. Take a look at it in, in a picture. I might add a little more here, a little more there. So the background's still showing through, right? You could stay in that background whatever color you like, right? And I see that, I can see when I'm looking in a photo or in selfie mode, I can see where I wanna change it. Whereas I can't see it like this when I'm looking at it myself, but if I turn it around and look at it as in a photo or selfie mode, I can suddenly see what my eye wasn't catching before, right? So, I, and then I just touch those up. Check it again. Yeah, see, now I like that better, okay? Really, it's, it's as simple as that. I know it's the weirdest thing. You don't think it's gonna work, but it really does. So we're happy with that. Um, there may, these brushes love to shed their bristles, so let it dry, and then you can just brush them right off, generally. And again, it's a farmhouse look, so we can get away with that, all right? That goes in there. I'm gonna dry this for the sake of speed. Okay, I think that's pretty good, all right? Uh, so yeah, there's lots of tips and tricks. I've got one more. If you are like me. <laughs> I don't want paint on my hands for the next step, right? Because water will activate the paint. If you have some hand sanitizer, um, it takes paint out really well. So I've got just an old towel here. I'm gonna just give my hands a squirt of hand sanitizer. Then dry them. And look, it's gone. Now, I love this because your hands get clean and they get sanitized. And you use up all that millions of gallons of sanitizer you have. <laughs> right? You can also use a sanitizer wipe, right? But I happen to have this on hand all the time. So it's also great for getting paint out of your clothes. I got paint all over myself yesterday when I was painting in my craft club, um, like a spatter, and it was a black top with white paint, of course. So. I took my hand sanitizer and I basically dumped it on my, after I took my top and, and uh, dumped this on and gave it a scrub because the paint was still fairly fresh, threw it in the laundry and it came out without any paint on it. So the hand sanitizer, because it's got lots of um, alcohol in it, is the trick. It's the alcohol that does the trick, right? So I used to use keep bottles of 90% um, 90, 90 alcohol, but the hand sanitizer, everybody has it, so I'm just using that. All right, so we have this, all right? Um, we have this, it's ready to go. If you wanted to sand it a little, you could. I'm not gonna, right? It's really has, it really hasn't raised the grain very much. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of these three, right? And I, I have a feeling I'm going with the red. And I'm gonna make like a birdhouse shape, right? So I'm, it's all about what you're feeling, right? If you're feeling the gray, I'm like, nah, it's kind of dull compared to the white for me. Right? I do like this one, right? And I might, consider that and I love this one right and so I might consider that and I'm thinking the red is the same on both sides where all the other ones are two different colors like, well, normally you don't get this but you get the uh, two different colors all right so you get like 10 different colors in your book so I think I'm gonna do the red 
I'm just gonna go for it. I am going to create a bird house shape. So we're winging it here. We're winging it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, Kim, that's crazy. I'm gonna, let me see. I'm gonna use this line to help me. All right, you can use your paper cutters and all that. I just, I like to use my scissors and I don't worry about perfection. I do not worry about it at all. All right, so I'm gonna put that there and I'm thinking I want it to go to about here at the top, right? So I have this and this, I'm gonna cut it off. I think I'll cut it off up here. Why not? Seems good to me. Well, isn't that cute? Doesn't that have a great... It looks like chipped paint, right? Like, that's amazing. All right. So we've made the decision on the colors, and that's usually the biggest... Um, decide. That's usually the biggest problem, is making the decisions. But once you start making the decisions, boom, you start creating the project. All right, so I'm going to just fold this in half, just on the top. Okay, because I just want to see where the, like, just like that. Okay, I just want to see, mark the top, right? Mark the halfway mark. It's pretty close to that black line, right? I'm going to use, I'm going to use this side, okay? I'm going to take um, something straight. We could also call it a ruler. <laughs> And I'm going to, let's see, would this be easier for you to see up here? Might be, eh? All right. I'm going to just go from the corner where, where I marked it, the halfway mark, and I'm just going to kind of give it a birdhouse shape, right? So, on one side only. All right. So you can see where I drew that line, okay? What I'm going to do is fold it again, and I'm going to cut so I get identical sides all right I'm going to cut along that line with it folded see that with it folded so I get two identical sides and I'm still not folding down the center I just use that mark okay so let's let's see if this is going to work of course it's going to work nothing ventured nothing gained right there we go. Bird house shape. <laughs> Pretty simple. Or house shape. Your choice. Right? So I like this. I'm going to go this way so that the, the um, peeled paint shows. Okay? I'm going to move this back a bit for you. Okay? So the peeled paint shows. And I'm going to use some of these popsicle sticks or craft sticks or whatever you want to call them. And I'm going to make the roof out of them. Okay, just so you know where I'm going with this, and I'm going to take another one, and I'm going to use it for the bottom. But for now, okay, I'm going to Mod Podge this on. Right? Now here's the thing, when you're Mod Podging thicker paper like this, it's not a napkin, right? Um, you want to get both sides with some glue on them, right? So Mod Podge both sides with some glue on it. So first I'm going to take my... Um, Mod Podge and oh, not that brush that's dirty. I'm going to take my Mod Podge and I'm going to brush it. I'm going to get a better brush. <laughs> Hang on, I'll be right with you. There we go. Okay. I'm going to take a brush and I'm going to Mod Podge all where I think that um, paper is going to go. All right. Now, Mod Podge, at least the DIY stuff that I make, recipe on YouTube um, dries matte so I don't worry about it overdoing it here right because I know it's going to be it's going to dry matte okay so I'm good and I'm going to Mod Podge the back of the paper so there's glue on both the there's glue on that and there's glue on this right because that's what Mod Podge is it's glue Right? You can see the paper starting to curl up. Right? Make sure you get it everywhere. Okay. 
and then stick it down. That looks good. That's why I have an apron, so I can wipe my hands. All right. Now I like to grab a little bit of uh, plastic wrap and really squeegee it down. So I like to put it right on top, get that out of the way. And then I like to use like an old credit card or um, this is from like a Cricut or whatever and just really squeegee it into that wood, right? The plastic keeps the paper from tearing because the paper does get softer, right? This is true when you're using a napkin or anything else. Then you can peel that back, right? You can do this. Now, I think that's pretty good. Just be gentle if you're going to do it without plastic, okay? The Mod Podge is making it stick, right? But it's not coming through, which I'm okay with. And typically, you won't see me seal over a project that I've Mod Podged, okay? Because lots of times I just don't bother. Right? I just don't. I'm doing it for indoors, right? So I'm not going to worry about it. However, if you want to seal over it, there's some things you need to know. I was just talking to a lady this morning and she um, sealed over a decoupage project that she did and it bubbled up. She sprayed over it after it had dried for a couple days, but I have a feeling what may have happened is a chemical reaction between the spray and the, the glue, which is this stuff, right? And so I think that may be what happened. Um, and maybe, or maybe the Mod Podge wasn't dry enough because typically anything water-based literally has to cure for 30 days, right? So I don't usually bother after 30 days. And I don't do stuff for outdoors as paper, right? I just don't. So, um, all right, so we have that on there. I'm going to dry it and we're going to see. On Amazon, I have a book. There's a link in the description below or I'll put a link in this later. Um, or you can go to Amazon, change your category to books, and then type in Farmhouse Craftaholics, and you'll find this, right? And, oh, I'm trying to do this one-handed. It's got all these different... Look at me, multitasking. All those different pages, right? So I'm using one of those. And then when this is done, uh, later on in the week, probably next week, I will drop it into the project library that you'll get access to if you buy the book as well. So, all right, so we've, here we are now, okay? Like, it's kind of cheating, isn't it? Like, you don't need the barn board. You just, you just have the photo of it, right? It's kind of, I like it. Anyway, I love this kind of stuff. I just think it's fun, and I'm, I'm all about having the fun, right? So, we've got that done, and I do, like I say, I want to put this on the bottom as kind of the bottom of the birdhouse. You could put even something like that if you wanted to, and these, like, thank you. So, you could cut it. Or you could trim, or you can trim it, or you can just leave it like that, right? So I've got a pair of scissors. No, I've got a pair of pliers, right? That I'm going to cut with. Um, so let me. See. I'm going to mark this. Probably the best thing I can do. Use my handy dandy. So I marked it and I'm going to trim it or not. <laughs> try the scissors. Yeah. Oh yeah, I do me. I just, I don't mind because I love experimenting, right? So, and sometimes it's fun if I can give you guys the option. So we have that. And I'm going to trim this one off like there. Okay, so I don't know what you call that, right angle cuts or something, right? Yeah, I like that. Okay, so I'm going to just glue those together first. Let us... I'm just gluing them together first. There we go. This is going to be cute. And 
All right, so I've glued it together. Just, I haven't glued it on, I just glued it together. See that, all right? So if I wanna do any painting or anything on this, I'm not doing it on there, all right? And I'm kind of thinking I have some an idea. I have an idea, you guys. Again, and I'm gonna, this is gonna be my base, all right? But I think we're good for now, you stay there. Anybody remember my markers? I'm gonna take my black marker and I'm gonna take a bottle of paint. Yep, a bottle of paint. And I'm gonna trace around my bottle of paint. Like so, with my, my paint marker, okay? I'm gonna just color it in. <laughs> you could paint it, right? You could totally paint it, but I've got this here right now, so I'm gonna go with this. I like to color. I always liked coloring as a kid. It was my favorite thing. Well, that was easy, right? So this is a marker. Um, I found them on Amazon, right? So now we have the hole for the birdhouse, just like that. All we did was trace around a bottle of paint and fill it in. I'm gonna do like a buff, not a buffalo plaid, but you know, um, Debbie from uh, Studio MDAZ. She likes to do those checks. So I've just cut that in half, right? And then I'm gonna draw lines with my pencil. I could have probably started at the center, but I did not. <laughs> Cause you know, Kim does Kim's way, right? If I was really thinking about it. Here's a tip too. When you're making something and you're gonna give it as a gift or something, don't make it the first time you've ever tried doing the thing, okay? So, there we go. So can you see, I've got those on there, all right? Because you learn a lot the first time you do the thing. So you might, like the lady that emailed me and decoupaged and then it it, um, it went all wrong at the end, right? Because it bu bubbled. Um, she, you need to know all the steps. If you're gonna make something and make it easy for yourself, you have to have done it before, right? If you haven't, you have to remember that anything can go, anything can happen, and you want it to be okay. You want it to be, it's a learning experience, right? So, I don't want you to be frustrated because you didn't do it before and it didn't work out and it looked, it was, looked so easy for me. I've probably done it a hundred times before, right? Which is why it looks so easy for me. But your first time, you need to be um, give yourself the grace to realize I'm learning, and it's not the time to make a um, keepsake gift, right? Until I know all the steps will work. Oh. All right, so this is where I'm going with this, right? Now you could have painted this white first. I'm going to leave it natural. It's fine, right? I don't know that I would do white against a white background, right? But like now, I, that's my that's gonna be the bottom of my birdhouse. Check it out, right? So I like it. I think it's great, right? So I'm gonna do the same thing on here, right? And this is where it's gonna get interesting. <laughs> so let's give her a go, right? If it doesn't work out at the top, I'm gonna to stick a star on there. <laughs> right? I got a backup plan, right? So all right, let's see. I'm gonna do the same thing here. Go about halfway.
I like this, guys. I do. There we go. All right. There we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Oh. Don't you love it when a plan comes together? I certainly do. So, I'm just going to glue this down, right? You can use regular glue or wood glue. Wait, regular glue. Hot glue. Again, this is not going outside, so I don't worry about it, right? Regular glue. That's so crafter, Kim. All right? I wouldn't put it outside because of the paper, right? I actually need more glue under there. There we go. Um, and I have one more step after this that I want to do. Okay, watch those fingers. Did you know the nozzle of the glue gun gets up to 350 degrees. That is why this stuff burns your fingers if you get it on there, right? So just always be careful. Doesn't it look cute? Oh my gosh. How cute is that? Okay, I'll put that over there. Now I'm gonna take the white, because I'm crazy, right? And I'm gonna just do some lines around this. It's nice and dry now. Okay. Like that. You can, you can hardly see them, but they're there, right? And it just gives it a little more depth, okay? And I'm going to take some of the black again, but the fine black, I think, and I'm going to make like stitches down the side. Okay, see that? Now, I have a stick from the yard, which I collected in the fall, right? And I'm going to, if I'm lucky, let's see if I can cut a piece. I want it to be as flat as I can right there, right, on one end. The other side doesn't matter, right? So I use my scissors and I'm gonna glue it there. <laughs> and it's gonna look like, like, um, you know, what the birds stand on, on the perch. And it's gonna give it some depth, right? A little more 3D kind of idea. Check it out. See, now it's got a perch. Oh my gosh. Can you see that in real life? How cute is that? Oh my goodness. I think I love it. So we're done with this guy today, all right? So he was made with paper from this book, right? And this tutorial is gonna be in the video library by next week. So you will be able to, to watch this tutorial, follow along, um, all that's going on, like everything I did today, you're gonna see it all, right? So, oh my gosh, it's even better than I hoped. <laughs> I love that when that happens, right?